Hey everyone, I want to talk to you today about the first 90 days. Actually, I like to call it the first 100 days after buying a company. All of the focus often is on buying the company. So it's about sourcing the lead, analyzing the business, doing the negotiation, the diligence, getting all the way to the closing table well, and then buying the business. But then you've actually bought a business. You need to learn how to run it well so it's a success into the future. So I want to talk about that period of time today. Here's the day you buy the business. Big, big day. It's very emotional. But once you bought the business, there's a strange sense of calm around it. And I know this I bought several businesses myself and I now teach others how to do it too. So you do need a plan going into it. And I always say to the people in my community, a B or a C player with a good system will always be an A player without a system or a plan every single time. So here's the plan and this is what you should follow. First 100 days. What I'm about to say is probably not what you'd expect. Actually block off the first good period of time and just do this one thing. So for the majority of your first 100 days, I want you to do this. I want you to listen. I want you to listen to all the people in the business. I want you to learn learn as much as you possibly can about the business because remember you will not know the business 100% there's no way even if you're the best in the world at diligence you will not know the business 100% when you buy it then I want you to love bit of a weird word as it relates to businesses so I'm going to put in brackets here respect I just want all the L's but I want you to respect the people in the business I want you to build relationship with them guess what the people who work in the business they are now your employees and in addition these people will know the business inside out and they'll have really good ideas about the future of the business things that may be are not working very efficiently, ways their business could grow, all of these things. So make sure you listen, learn, respect, love. And then finally, after you've done those three, then you can come and the fourth L is lead. When you start leading, quick side note, lead as you. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. I see this all the time. People go into leadership positions and they think they know what leadership is because they've seen some internet guru preach on leadership. People follow authenticity. So be you. We're all created differently. So just be confident, but be you and lead well. So listen, learn, Learn, love, lead. So don't do that much is basically what I'm saying. Another way to say this is do nothing. Like don't come in all guns blazing, start chopping and changing things. That is not sensible. I do want to put an asterisk next to do nothing because there is an exception. So the first exception that I have, I always implement a weekly management meeting and we use the EOS system in our company. So EOS, I'm not endorsed by the EOS system at all, but if you read a book called Traction, it will talk about this way of organizing and running small business. We find it very efficient. So we do it in our companies. The weekly management meeting there is called a level 10 meeting. And so I actually implement this pretty much straight away. Every week I want to get together with all the managers in the business and there's a set agenda for a level 10 meeting. So we follow it, we get together, we discuss issues, we, we see how each other are doing in their departments. But this is really beneficial. But outside of this, I pretty much do nothing. Now, finally, you're gonna ask me, when do I actually start making changes? Because this doesn't work, this doesn't work. I've got all these ideas, I'm full of energy, well, let's just wait at least till day 80, 90, 100, okay? So let's say day 80, 90, 100. This is when I'm interested in starting making changes. And what kind of changes are we talking about? First place you might want to look is systems. If the business has been around for several decades, it may have lots of manual processes, systems. Have a look, see if there are ways that you could make the business more efficient. If you set up processes and systems, you're actually setting the business up well for future growth because manual processes are really hard to scale, whereas systems are much easier to scale. So you're helping yourself, you're helping the business get more efficient. At this point, you might wanna think about accounting softwares as well. So we've had it several times where we've gone into a business and it's not using our preferred accounting software. For us, again, I'm not affiliated, but I like QuickBooks Online. I used to like QuickBooks Desktop as well. So QuickBooks Desktop or Online. If it's not on that ecosystem, then I like to move things into it because then I have consistency across our companies. So think about those types of systems as well. What else? Maybe service providers. What do I mean by service providers? Well, a service provider could be the person who provides your internet, for example, but it could also be someone like an IT support person as well. So a lot of companies have managed service providers where if something breaks with the internet, the server, the laptops, they immediately pick up the phone and have that solved. So you might wanna to start to go to someone you know and you trust, not just people that you inherit. I also like to change my insurance agents often as well, my insurance providers, people who write our policies for us. Again, I like to have consistency across our companies. At this point, you might also wanna start thinking about growth plans. You do not want to come in all guns blazing in these first early days and start talking about growth. It is not sensible. It really unsettles people because people do not like change. Wait. Wait until you've built a relationship with people and explain that you're only bringing in growth plans for the benefit of the business 
the people that work in the business to provide more opportunity for everyone. That is how you should be thinking about growth. And I don't start thinking about it until 80, 90 or 100 days into it. There are several other areas you might want to change. You will know better than anyone at this point because you've spent three months in the business learning it inside out. So you'll see things and it will depend on the industry, the type of business, the geography, all these different factors. But this is a system that I'd like to encourage you to follow. This will set you up for success. And if you do this, you are setting the business up with a strong, solid foundation, which means you should be profitable for many years to come. Hope this was helpful. If you're interested in more handholding in the business acquisition process, please click below to book a discovery call with me for my inner circle. The inner circle is a growing community of small business investors. We're helping one another buy businesses, quit our jobs and become full-time investors. We've had several people now leave their job and become full-time investors because of my inner circle. Very satisfying and I love coaching our crew. So if you're interested, book a call on the link below and I'll speak to you soon.